The next design pattern I want to look at is the chaining design pattern. You'll probably be familiar with this if you're working with a lot of .NET APIs. They've been producing in more recent years the concept of a fluent API, allowing you to execute something directly at the end of a previous method execution. This is popularized by link in the .NET space. Or if you're familiar with jQuery, jQuery is a great example of a chained API uh, for JavaScript. This code snippet down the bottom illustrates the kind of goals that we're trying to do with a chained API. First off, with jQuery, we're providing a selector where we're looking for the elements of a class called foo. The next thing we want to do is add to all those elements another class, then call the fade-in method, and finally modify the HTML. Essentially, this is saying execute these following three lines of code based off of the J initial jQuery selector without having to assign that to a variable and then execute separate method invocations against that particular variable. In this example, I've got a simple little calculator which I've created. I start off by assigning the initial value for the calculator, which is going to be zero, and perform some add and multiply methods against it. I finish up by calling equals, which will then allow me to provide a callback function of something that I want to do. So let's have a look at how you would create a chained API. So here I have the skeleton of that calculator which I've created before, and then at the bottom I have the execution of that same code that we had within our slides. If I jump over to a command prompt, so I can execute this with a a command line JavaScript tool such as Node.js and execute it, you'll see that we get this error immediately. Type error, cannot call method add of undefined. If we look back at our code, it, it might not be obvious initially as to what that means. We haven't, haven't said that we want undefined. What has happened here is JavaScript, like languages such as Ruby, has an implicit return value of every function execution. If you don't specify a return value, such as I haven't yet, this will immediately return the value of undefined. This means that when we've called the second add method on line 17, it's expected that the previous add method has returned something that I can operate against. It actually hasn't, and this has then resulted in the error which we saw. If the add method had returned something, we could potentially have the same problem at multiply or equals, as they themselves are not returning a particular value. So let's start off by implementing our chained API. To do this, we first need to return a value from our add, multiply, and equals methods. And the value we want to return is the this value. So I've modified all my methods to return the value of this. In JavaScript, the this keyword is a little bit special. It represents the current state which the method was invoked off of, meaning that when it's the chained API, the first time we call add, the this value will be the calculator. Because we're returning this, the next time we call the add method on line 17, it is still the instance of the calculator that was passed to the first add method, it's just been returned again. And we can continue on this way multiple times to produce our changed, chained API. So if we go back to our, our command window and execute the code again, you'll see that we didn't have the error that we previously had. But we've also got no execution really have happened. We didn't get the equals method executing the code that we were expecting it to execute. It's because we haven't implemented the method bodies. So let's go ahead and actually implement the method bodies as we require. I've started off here by implementing the add and multiply functionality. Through JavaScript closures, we're going to be capturing the start value, which was the initial value passed into our calculator, and we're just going to continue to modify that. So in the add method, we're going to add to it, and in the multiply, we're going to multiply it by the value that was passed in. For the equals though, we need to work out how do we, how do we handle the function that has been provided. All we want to do is we want to invoke the callback function because the function reference has been passed in, and pass in the start value. This does mean that when 
the equals function executes, we'll get a single argument that has been passed in called result. If we go back to our command window and execute this piece of code, you'll see that we get the value of 9 output, which is what we have been expecting. So now that we have our chained API written, we might want to be taking into consideration the value of this inside of each of our functions. As I said, the this value is a little bit special and it can be modified. If we want to be careful with our chained API and ensure that no one is going to be doing something that we're not expecting with it, we can assign the value of this to something and capture it through JavaScript closures. A common way of doing this in JavaScript is to assign the value, a variable named that, to the value of this. So inside our functions, instead of returning this, we'll return that. You can obviously name this variable to something that is more obvious and easier to understand within the scope of your application. If we go back to our command window and execute the code, you'll see that we've had no change because the value of that represents exactly what we wanted and what we were expecting. So to recap, the concept of a chained API is something that is very common in a lot of programming languages, particularly .NET. .NET exposes this through the link API, and it's probably what you're most familiar with this uh, chained design pattern from. In JavaScript, you'll be familiar with it if you've worked with jQuery, as it uses it quite extensively. And one of the primary aims of it, in JavaScript in particular, is to reduce character size. Because JavaScript has to be submitted over the wire, we want to minimize the amount of data that we're providing. If we don't have to assign our objects to variables, we can more optimize the bytes that are being sent down and the chain design pattern can help you with this. The idea behind the chain design pattern is to return the value of this, or at least an object that represents the next point in your API call, allowing the user to execute continuous functions based off of that. As you also saw, we can assign the value of this to something if we're not able to trust the caller which is going to be executing our chained API. And as I mentioned, you can you don't have to return the this value, you only have to return something that makes sense for the next continuation of your API chain. Mm -hmm.